Hello and welcome to Roving Report, a program that looks at the Northeast and all its dimension and brings you the changing mood and tenor of the region in all its colors. I'm your host, Lumpen Vishum, and the highlights of today's program are 68th Independence Day celebrated with patriotic zeal in the Northeast with an appeal to militant outfits to shun violence. Union Home Ministry reviews the security situation at Assam Nagaland border. Agartala City reaps the benefits of peace in the state. And woman entrepreneur in Manipur carves a success story. The 68th Independence Day was celebrated with enthusiasm and patriotic zeal in the Northeast region. Ignoring boycott calls by some militant groups, people turned up in large numbers to celebrate the occasion. There was an appeal to militant outfits to shun violence and join the path of development. We have a report. Patriotic fervor was on display as the nation celebrated the 68th Independence Day with gaiety and enthusiasm. Celebrations marked the occasion in the northeastern states as well. In Imphal city of Manipur, a large number of people attended the celebrations amid a boycott call by some militant outfits. Chief Minister O. Ibobi Singh unfurled the flag at the parade ground of 1st Manipur Rifles Battalion and appealed to the militants to lay down arms. Altogether, 36 contingents, including students, took part in the march past. Just to show respect and to show our uh, feeling of nationalism to our country, we just came to take part in this. In Tripura, thousands of people gathered at the Assam Rifles Parade Ground in Agartala to mark the day. Chief Minister Manik Sarkar unfurled the tricolour and urged the militant groups to come forward for talks and shun violence. Paramilitary forces, state police and NCC cadets participated in the parade which was followed by a colourful cultural programme. Heavy rains and boycott call by some militant groups failed to affect the spirit of celebrations in Assam. Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi unfurled the national tricolour at the veterinary field ground in Guwahati. Cultural performances were also presented to mark the day. The violence has no place, uh, insurgency has no place. Let us uh, give up the part of, part of uh, violence, take the part of Mahatma Gandhi, non-violence, the methods, discussion through peace, that is the message they want to give it. I also want to appeal all the insurgents group to give up the part of violence. In Arunachal Pradesh, people came out in large numbers to celebrate the occasion despite heavy rains. Chief Minister Nabam Tuki unfurled the flag at the Indira Gandhi Park and called for peace in the state. Similar spirit of enthusiasm marked the celebration of the event in Nagaland, Mizoram, Sikkim and Meghalaya. The participation of people in the celebrations across the region reflects their faith in democracy. Moving on, 
the northeastern states have been witnessing a rapid growth in rural and urban areas, especially with the implementation of several government-run schemes. Let's focus on the changing scenario in the region with our segment, Ripples. Tripura has witnessed decline in insurgency-led violence in the past few decades. This has given a momentum to development work in the state. Capital Agartala has been undergoing a major transformation with the growth in business, infrastructure and other sectors. Take a look. Tripura was once reeling under the impact of insurgency which had hampered its development. However, with the gradual decline of militant activities over the last few years, the state has been making tremendous progress. Agartala city is a proof of this change. Small and big industries, educational institutes, shopping malls, hospitals and better road connectivity, the city is witnessing a change. Now uh, it's a time for peace and we have hardly any insurgency problem across the state, though uh, police uh, sometimes report of a movement of some extremist elements, uh, especially in uh, North Tipura and Dholai district. But we have not heard anything about their activities. Uh, there was no attack in past two years, uh, no such, uh, you know, violence. So uh, it is almost a peaceful state as far as uh, the insurgency is concerned. Emphasis on infrastructure development has resulted in better roads, education and healthcare facilities, thereby improving the living conditions of the public. With a decline in militancy, investors are also showing interest in the state and a good number of industries have come up in and around Agartala. This has created employment scope for thousands of youth. Additionally, the state has formulated investor-friendly policies to attract national and multinational companies. Slowly, slowly, there so many industries have come up and a lot of growth has come up along with that. In lieu of infrastructure, development, road, communication, everything has gone up. And people have started coming because they have seen now that resourceful state is this, Tripura, and on because of that, they have started coming. Plus, the state has given certain incentives like subsidies and other things. Rajdhani Bashi Shavi Dekhte Pai Je, Amadid Rajya Je Bani Jo, Bapsha, Sthaniyo Je Kormo Shangsthane Je Jo Manushe Je Chuta Chuti, Chuta Kato Kaje Je Jo Pahar Jawa, Egram Theko Egram Jawa, Eguli Onik Tai Shabuli. Abar Dhire Dhire Agar Chehara Firiyashche. Onik Tripura Gram Pahar Agar Jaga Firiyashche. Ete Manushe Hathe Mani Flow Ota Man Manushe Rojkar Barche. A large number of shopping malls have mushroomed in the city and the retail sector is thriving. The state has also taken advantage of its proximity to Bangladesh and stronger trade and cultural relations between the two sides has brought much benefit. <laughs> अभी इतना सारा कंस्ट्रक्शन वगैरह हो रहा है डेवलपमेंट वगैरह वर्क हो रहा है और खास करके हम लोग जो बिजनेस करते हैं बांग्लादेश के साथ पहले इतना अच्छा बिजनेस नहीं होता था बांग्लादेश पहले लाखों का होता अभी करोड़ों का बिजनेस हो रहा है बांग्लादेश के साथ जिसके नतीजे आपको पता होगा ये त्रिपुरा और बांग्लादेश के में पहली बार मतलब इंडिया के साथ बांग्लादेश का पहला आईसीपी अगरतला में बना है अभी The overall development and socio-economic growth in the state is a proof that peace is essential for progress and by rejecting violence, other states in the region can replicate the success story of Tripura as well. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the northeast recently. Floods triggered by the overflowing of Brahmaputra and its tributaries due to heavy rains in Assam and Arunachal Pradesh has affected more than 3.5 lakh people in 14 districts of Assam. The worst affected districts are Lakhimpur, Dhimaji, Sonitpur, Nagaon, Morigaon and Dibrugarh. Thousands of people have been forced to flee their homes and are currently seeking shelter in relief camps. The overflowing water of the Brahmaputra has also inundated the Burha Pahar, Bagori and Kahora ranges of the Kaziranga National Park, forcing animals to migrate towards highlands, crossing over the NH-37. 
With animals seeking shelter in highlands, the Forest Department has imposed Section 144 and is issuing time card to all the vehicles passing through the park. Rescue operations are currently underway and the state administration has alerted the army for any emergency situation in the flood hit areas of the state. The Border Security Force recently organized a sapling exchange program with the Border Guard Bangladesh under the concept of My Earth, My Duty to educate the troopers on both the sides about the dangerous impact of global warming. The program was a part of the massive planting drive taken by BSF to plant 1.8 lakh saplings throughout the country in its area today in half an hour time and create a record. Saplings of various valuable trees were exchanged at the Accora check post with an aim to promote awareness. The Guwahati City Police recently launched Crematrix, a community-based real-time crime monitoring platform. Launched by Assam Police Chief Khagin Sarma, this platform will allow citizens of Guwahati to report vehicle theft via SMS, which is apparently transmitted immediately to all police officers on the field. Besides Crematrix, Guwahati Police has also launched a separate website, www.guwahatisitypolice.gov.in, to provide information like phone numbers of police stations and a list of most wanted criminals. Court of Sessions Judge Imphal East recently ordered for the release of activist Iram Sharmila Chanu dropping the charges of attempt to suicide. She was released from the Jawaharlal Nehru Institute of Medical Sciences Security Ward after the completion of all the formalities. She has been fasting since 2000, demanding the repeal of AFSPA. The indefinite economic blockade imposed by several organizations in Assam in protest against the violence along Assam Nagaland border has affected Manipur as well. Over 1,000 state bound trucks loaded with essential and daily needed items are stranded on the Guwahati Dimapur Imphal portion of NH39. As a result, Manipur is facing shortage of essential items. Most of the petrol pumps have been closed down and long queues were seen outside the few open petrol pumps. Five militants of the National Democratic Front of Borderland, Songbijit faction were killed in an encounter with security forces in Chirang district of Assam. The militants exchanged fire with the joint team of Assam police and the army during an operation in the jungle areas of Raimati. The police also recovered arms, ammunition and cash from the spot. As tension continues to prevail in violence hit Assam Nagaland border, the Union Home Ministry has submitted a report on the situation to the Prime Minister's office. Meanwhile, the centre has deployed extra forces in the region to prevent any further clashes. In an estimate, over 10,000 people from the affected villages are currently taking shelter in relief camps. We have a report. Union Minister of State for Home Affairs Kiran Riju, who was in Guwahati to attend a meeting with the Chief Ministers of eight northeastern states, reviewed the security situation on Assam Nagaland border. He held talks with Assam and Nagaland Chief Ministers on the escalating border violence. Meanwhile, a curfew has been imposed in Golaghat following the clashes between the police and protesters. The army also held a flag march in the violence-hit areas to bring the situation under control. In addition to three companies of CRPF, 1,000 paramilitary personnel have been deployed and security pickets have been set up in the affected villages. The Home Ministry had earlier also submitted a report on the border violence to the Prime Minister's office. They, they should be immediately rehabilitated, this is our concern. And let, let us, uh, you know, speak to the, both the chief ministers and we will, you know, try to settle this issue as soon as possible. The situation along the Assam Nagaland border continues to remain tense, with the death toll going up to 13. On August 12, some miscreants from Nagaland raided the villages along the interstate border and gunned down tribal villages from Assam. They also torched around 200 houses in villages falling under Sector B of the Assam-Nagaland border. 
an estimated 10,000 people from 13 villages in the area who had to leave their houses following the clashes are currently seeking shelter in 12 relief camps at Uriam Ghat and Sarupothar. We have already started new camps in that area. Seven places we have already identified where our people have already gone. CRPF is there, Assam Police is there. We are having more tickets also in those areas because people are to go back to their own house. The centre has been trying to restore peace and normalcy in the trouble-torn region and bring an amicable solution to a Sam Nagaland border dispute. Women in Manipur have shown their ability in various fields. Today we meet a successful entrepreneur, Gina Kumujam, who manufactures organic soap and trains many local women to be self-reliant. A report. At her tiny house located in Khurai, Thoidingjam Lekhai in Imphal, the 61-year-old Gina Kumujam is busy preparing herbal soap. She took up soap making in 2004. The variety of soaps under the brand name of Mangal are being produced with the extracts of locally available fruits like lemon, xylosma, aloe vera, citrus latipus and cucumber. Gina's soap brand is a symbol of women empowerment and enlightenment. <laughs> Gina also has the expertise in recycling waste materials into productive and income generating items apart from making soaps. She wishes to open a showroom for her products and a training center. Gina's soap making farm has been a source of earning for some other destitute poor women like widows and those living with HIV AIDS. They come to her house and together make soaps and handicraft. <laughs> National Innovation Foundation of India recognized her work in 2007. Impressed by Kumujam's work, the Grassroots Innovations Augmentation Network has come forward to help her start large-scale production and widen her market base, not only in Manipur, but in the entire Northeast. Northeast region is home to diverse tribes and communities who celebrate their festivals with pomp and gaiety. Today we take you to Assam where Diyojana Dance Festival was celebrated and to Manipur where birth anniversary of Lord Krishna was observed. The devotion towards Lord Krishna attracted a large number of devotees to the Iskon Temple in Imphal City. The birth anniversary of Krishna was celebrated with great enthusiasm as artists performed Ras Leela dance and Sankirtan, a devotional song. Devotees offered prayers to seek blessings from the God for peace and harmony in the state. The main theme of observing the Janmashtami festival is uh, in order to bring a peace in the society, in the state, in the country. In Guwahati city, thousands of devotees from across the country thronged the Kamakya temple to celebrate a three-day-long Deodhani dance festival. The artists having their faces painted with colors and holding weapons perform Deodhani dance, a semi-classical dance form. The Deodhani festival was held in connection with the Manas Puja, worship of the serpent goddess. 
It is believed that taking part in this festival bestows the dancers with powers from goddess Kamakya. The festivals not only bring spiritual calm and peace, but unite the people of various communities and faiths. With that, we've come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at anyindia underscore ANI. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host, Limpim, signing off with some images of Tetsio Sisters, the folk singers from Nagaland, performing in different countries. Goodbye and see you next week.